Hello pilots and welcome back to another X-Wing flight video brought to you by Out of Art Gaming. As always, my name is Phil and today we have a standard 20 point game. No tournaments, no aces high, just a straight up slugger match between myself and Fergus before he decides to abandon us to go to university and further his education. But it's Resistance versus Rebels. And as soon as I recorded this, I knew there was only one person to join us to commentate at this, and that is... It's James, Resistance and Rebel user only. So, yes, absolutely game for me. Yeah, it it's almost like I planned it this way, but I genuinely didn't know what Fergus was bringing to the table. But as soon as I saw the list, I was like, yeah, James needs to be here for this. This is... He'll, he'll know more about both lists than I do, and I flew one of them. So it's great to have you with us for this one, buddy. Yeah, um, you're welcome. So I think the best thing to do is just to go straight through those lists. So did you want to run through your favoured resistance and all of the craziness that they've got over there? Yeah, so Fergus has brought Chewbacca in the YT-1300 with Ray Gunner. Contraband Cybernetics, Notorious, Marksmanship, and Ray's Millennium Falcon title. He's also got Kaz in the Fireball with R1J5, Contraband Cybernetics, the Targeting Computer, Advanced Slam, Elusive, and Kaz's Fireball title. Then we've also got Lega Fossang in the Resistance Y-Wing with L4ER5, Proximity Mines, Targeting Computer, Delayed Fuses, The Belly Run, Ferrosphere Paint, Ion Cannon Turret. So we've also got in another Y Wing, we've got Shazza Zaro with R6 D8, a targeting computer, engine upgrade, The Belly Run, Ion Cannon Turret. And then rounding off the list, we've got BB 8, our main little droid in the Resistance pod with Han Solo Crew and Automated Target Priority. I'm going to take a breath. Why don't you run through your list? Yeah, I was going to say, have a cup of tea, mate. That's a lot to go through. So I have gone nice and simple with four fully stacked B-Wings, because why not? Uh, heading up the list, we have Gina Moonsung with marksmanship, fire control system, heavy laser cannon, jamming beam, ion torpedoes, seismic charges, munitions failsafe, and the stabilized s foils. Supporting her, we have Tendum with marksmanship, fire control system, proton cannons, ion torpedoes, seismic charges, and stabilized S foils. Braylon Stroud makes an appearance again, marksmanship, fire control system, proton cannons, ion torpedoes, munitions failsafe, and stabilized S foils. Big breath to finish it off, we have Netron Pollard with marksmanship, fire control system, heavy laser cannon, jamming beam, ion missiles, prox mines, munitions failsafe, stabilized S foils. Basically, you name it, I've thrown it at the B-Wings to see what could stick. That's probably the thickest stack of cards I've ever brought to a game that wasn't epic, to be honest. Yeah, it's it's a lot. They've got a lot of uh, a lot of points to spend and a lot of upgrade slots to use them. I mean, I remember when I first, like before 2.5 started, I had a triple B-Wing list and I thought, this is kind of scary. And I, I think it was one of the last games I flew before 2.5 came out. And then 2.5 came out and I was looking through my list and I was like, right, which ones sort of still work, which ones don't? And the B-Wing one, I was like, I have points spare. Yeah, those B-Wings are efficient I mean, point-wise. Yeah, I mean, they're all five points apiece. I mean, originally, Netrim was four points, so I could stick Hera in there as well. But actually... Netron going up to five meant that I've used Gina instead, and Gina is a great synergistic pilot to work with Tendam and Braylon because she must hand off one of her stress tokens at the start of the engagement phase. And I've got the stress boys with her. Yeah, so the stress boys are brilliant. Absolutely so, such strong abilities in a durable ship. Before we. Yeah. Really go into the game proper what scenario is being played here i see three tokens so that is assault the transmissions i actually can't remember you it's, not, it's, too sure. it, it's even on the actual intro card 
and I wasn't even paying attention to it. Um, it's it's the one where you have to claim the objective. So I think it actually might be yes, scrambling. Yes, because there's like tokens. That's yes. Yeah. Yes. I haven't played much objective play recently. We we did a big aces high that went up last week, and Black Academy's come back. But yeah, this was um, scramble the transmission. So do an action, claim your objective, score a point for it at the end of the turn from turn two. So good. I like this one actually. It's one of my one of the better missions, I think, because again, it's only three objectives, so you can't buzz through, score them, and just run away with it so quickly. They're not it will take a long time for you to win by just claiming the objective, so it does mean that there is still some fighting to be had, which is quite nice. And especially when you've got this many ships on the board, you definitely want to see lots of dice being thrown around there. Yes. Now, but, I'm coming from a player who's used the resistance Y wings, but has always thrown on the configuration. I'm very curious to see how how these work with the original ability on the ship, along with these upgrades, like the engine upgrade, the targeting computer. You know, Lega was saying has the astromech that can pass a calculate token, which seems great with that native ability. Mm. So I'm looking forward to seeing that in action. I mean, I, again, like yourself, when I've used the resistance Y-Wings, it's been a case of, I mean, why would you not take wartime loan? It's, it's get so much extra shield. health. It's, yeah. yeah. And but I, like, I like the ability. Yeah, it's very expensive now, but I do like the ability it comes with. Now, Fergus is normally a Separatist player. I think he's forgotten that pods don't like to be on objectives. Oh, yeah. So BBA not is not like going to enjoy that. that. No. Um, That's well, he's, a, he's, a, he's fortunate there. But yeah, I mean, I would normally have wartime loadout on those Y-Wings, but its native ability is actually pretty good, and the upgrades he's, that Fergus has got on there really play into that actually yeah so, so original ability on the wiring is intuitive interface after you perform an action added to your action bar by a talent elicit or modification upgrade you may perform a calculate action yeah so fantastic potentially giving you with target computer a, a form of double modding obviously no focus calculate isn't as powerful but still really really quite solid and it does make mean that you can spend those points on other things instead of having the extra shields so i think it makes them quite versatile actually with that whereas with wartime loadout you're sort of narrowing its focus if that makes sense yeah wartime loadout is definitely become more of a i'm firing torpedoes yeah build. I found that out. Thanks, James. <laughs> that was. If you want to see that game, check out uh, some of the other videos. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll put a link up in the corner for that one. You can see me get absolutely decimated by some resistance Y wings and Poe Dameron and Ray, if I remember rightly. Yeah, Ray is very strong at the moment. Yeah. Now, it's um, interesting that you decided to have all four of your ships together at the top because you definitely claimed that token towards the top of the screen but Fergus has just sent who was that Lega just to go grab that one at the bottom of the screen pretty early and you're not contesting it Did, were you sort of thinking you know what I'll grab an objective but I'm mostly here to just kill yeah I kind of went with the buying them in a formation especially with the synergy between Gina uh, 10, brilliant, and even Netrum's ability as well. It so felt like Netrum does. Uh, so Netrum's ability, uh, after you barrel roll, you may choose one friendly ship that is not stressed at range, stressed at range 0 to 1. That ship gains one stress token, then you rotate 180 degrees. Right, another way to stress 10 or brilliant yeah. needed. And to turn around. And to turn around, which I know the B-Wings actually got an incredibly interesting dial. Yeah, I think because they've got the, the one talent, so you could one talent and then turn one eighty. Yeah, it's like some weird 
uh, drift or what? what how... it, it would it would almost be um, the sidestep maneuver. Yeah, it's a little bit like the sidestep. That's yeah. that can be but weird. I I just really liked that, and I felt that flying them together as well, especially when you've got. I mean, those wirings, they don't have the wartime loadout, but there's still seven health there. Huey has 11 health. Kaz now only has four, but still, if I can focus fire down, especially when I've got stabilized s foils to do primary plus um, the secondary cannons, the amount of hurt that those four together can pump out is going to be crazy. Yeah, and, and particularly early on, if you can put damage onto Kaz, then his ability just becomes null and void. Yeah, I mean, Kaz, he's an interesting one. I don't really fly his ship, but I know how dangerous he can be. So it's worth trying to, I mean, basically getting a ship and taking him off the board early. Yeah, Any I mean, Kaz... Has... Yeah, he starts off very efficient, and then as the game drags on, he does get less and less, which yeah. you know, is why he's got the slam. You can send him straight into the fight. Yeah, I mean, he's a really quick ship, which is something that B-Wings can oh, sometimes he is struggle crazy with. crazy fast with uh, various upgrades. You can get him to go like, across the board in a turn. Yeah. But it looks like we have got our first bit of shooting, and... Just checking if Gina has bullseye. And that's for the heavy laser cannon. Yeah. Didn't didn't fancy the jamming beam. It was a zero point upgrade. I thought I just. I know, it right? It's there. it's always on like my T seventy. It's like, do I want to use the jamming beam? No. I, I can't Brassic. remember where it was, but there was one situation where I was like, you know, what, maybe I should have jammed there. Yeah, I mean, I. I did recently play a game where I was almost begging for some way to jam my opponent because I just really needed them to not have a target lock on me. Um, I mean, it could have been yeah. against you when you destroyed me on TTS, but you know what? Sometimes it's going to be really efficient, but there we go, spending that target lock. Now, you, in my you, defense... You the, the bullseye. Yeah, I think I probably did that the wrong way around. I should have done the primary then the stabilized s foils a lot of cards a lot to read but hey we got another damage onto kaz so kaz is half pointed now no half point scoring in this but that's a good start in my eyes it also and adds more risk to him slamming and revealing a card because now he doesn't just get the one he chose at the start of the game yeah he could get any and this is a proton cannon. Ooh. Yeah. So marksmanship plus the proton cannon ability. I forgot that the uh, the beams could take the proton cannons. It's not something yeah. I've used. That is strong. Yeah, very especially as I said with marksmanship, it is very strong and. For those evil eyes that are watching, rather listen to it. Yes, I did put Netrum and Braylon in the wrong place. I did have to fix that. But that is two crits going through onto Kaz. And that's a damage sensor array and a fuel leak. So he's probably quite happy he pulled the fuel leak second there. Now, what he so, can do with Kaz is he's got R1J5 on board. So, while you have two or fewer stress tokens, you can perform actions on damaged cards even while stressed. After you repair a damaged card with the ship trait, you may spend one charge to repair that card again. So I'm not entirely sure what crits he currently has, but if I was on the ship, he could fix it entirely. Well, he's got... If he survives. Yeah, if he survives. I mean, he's got damage sensor array, um, fuel leak is definitely a ship break okay. and damage sensor array. I am just checking my damage deck, it's in here somewhere. It's also a ship one, so he could probably die right now. Uh, just yeah, he's, he's only got two, I think, at this point. Yeah, okay, never yeah. mind. But you know, uh, R1J5 
could have done it by yeah. offering up an early game threat to four B rings in the bullseye of what two of them? Yeah, I think it, it was unfortunate. Um, Fergus bumped into Shasta there. He was hoping to be able to slam him behind those B wings, which would have been really good for him. Unfortunately, it didn't quite pan out. So, yeah. but it does trigger Chewie's ability, which, despite having used it myself, completely forgot about. Which is an amazing the ability. The thing that I keep hearing, like people going, "Oh yeah, Chewbacca is really good," and I just never use him in the resistance. But yeah, yeah. being able to get a free attack, free action, then attack. Uh, oh, it's an action then in this day, isn't it? Yeah. So I mean, that's still limited to once per round. Yeah, right? it's, it's a, bo a bonus it's a attack. bonus. Yeah, so just like any other bonus attack, it's once per round. But that is three shields off Braylon from a bonus attack. Don't, so, don't hurt Chewie's friends. Yeah, don't hurt. I mean, let the Wookiee win. But yeah. that is yeah. I mean, that was a, a nice strong bonus attack, which means he's going to have another attack in a moment. In fact, that probably be coming just now because I think it is time for Chewie to have a normal attack, or we could be just moving straight onto Shasa. Interesting. Did did Chewie's regular attack get forgotten? I I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. Oh no, there we go. I think. Yeah, I think I was measuring up Netrum forgetting that it was a bonus attack from Chewie. Right, um, okay. Which, with the Braylon stressful reroll, no shields there. But, three shields off that bonus attack is still really powerful. Now we've got Netrum taking shots at Shasa. Interestingly, Chewie's shooting out the front there. Did he already use the force from Ray on that first shot? Did I miss he it? did, yes. Ah, okay. Good old Ray Gunner is very good. I think and Ray so is green dice. Yeah. My my green dice for B Wings was the green dice were doing really well there. Um this is Shasa back and there's some more damage going Never mind. through. Yeah. There's Netrum taking a shield, but they've got plenty of health. They do. Eight health apiece. I mean that's 32 health on my side of the board there. I am not used to flying this much health, to be honest. I tend to fly things that pop quickly. So it's quite nice to have something that can take a bit of damage. But at the end of that round, it is five points to me and one point to Fergus with Azuda going down. It was a shame. I was looking forward to seeing it actually slam around the board, but at the same time, happy to get rid of a ship early. Didn't... Didn't Fergus get points for the objectives, or...? He only got the one objective. He got the middle oh, objective. He's... Right, Lega's stressed, so doesn't have that one at the bottom. Yeah. So Lega was stressed, so I couldn't get the one at the bottom. Um, that feels like a mistake, because now Lega's going to have to hang around to capture that before heading into the fight. Yeah. Um Shessa took the one Shessa took the one in the middle, which I think he was hoping to get with BB eight, but BB eight landed on the obstacle. Um That's a really aggressive position. That's for very aggressive. Hoping hoping that those B wings are gonna move quite quickly. But the turret is Facing away at the moment, so target lock. I assume going to get a calculate. There we go. Annoyingly, I don't have many of the nice large calculate tokens, so it did make it a bit tricky. I mean, it's safe to assume it. If it's a small green token, it's probably a calculate. Yeah, but there we go. Um, Lego going a bit slower there to get that objective. Now, Are you jumping off of the debris? Yeah. Is Lego, do you know, boy or girl? 
Battle Woman? I don't know. I, I looked this up, but I have forgotten. I think both of the Y-Wing pilots here are women. Nice. I did um, have someone. I think, I think one of them... Like, paints the ships, I think, was the backstory on one. I'm going to have a quick Google. That's one thing you got to love about the Star Wars universe, that everyone has a wiki page. There's always something interesting. And... Oh, that is incredibly close with Netrum just missing that obstacle there and getting out of Chassa's arc there. Yeah. How is that not on the... what? <laughs> I, there's a tiny little nook and that B-Wing has found it. Um, yeah, I was also very surprised. Thankful. I thought I was. I thought it made a big mistake there, but very surprised when that actually landed there. So Shasa Zaro is her squadron's graphic artist, and is actually wingmate of Lega. Lega oh, is nice. apparently a very good pilot, having marked Thai kill counts on her helmets, and she's already filled up two. So she's oh, wow. on a, like that's. Presumably, like, Battle of Exegol, she's filled up two yeah. helmets with kill count. Nice. So, yeah. Oh, and there's Chewie getting some damage from bumping into the smallest ship oh, yes, in the game. Stop bumping. The Resistance pod, that is the smallest ship in the game, isn't it? I think the only thing that must be... Yeah, I think the only thing that even comes anywhere near that is possibly the Etta or the Vulture. But it is absolutely minuscule. I mean, look at it Look at it next to the Falcon. It's the almost cockpit. the size of the cockpit, yeah. Yeah. It's so... It's such a funny little ship. Also, it's BB-8. How can you... Yeah. How can you not like that? I mean, yeah, BB-8 is cool. If you're a resistance pilot. So I should fly more resistance, I really should. But I just love my first order and Empire so much. Uh, fly what you like. You know, as long as you're Brilliant. within the rules of the game, fly what you want. And Sometimes you know what? If your opponent's really okay with it, fly what's not in the rules. I don't know. I mean, I would like to do like mixed faction lists at some point. Almost like 1.0 where you have like resistance and rebels together and first order and empire together I they, they've leaned into that a little bit on legion which i know is getting a bit off topic but you can now get some of the bounty hunters in other factions so yeah maybe they'll bring that to x-wing yeah but you can't get dinjara in either of the factions i play and i might just have to buy him anyway just for the little grogu model but we still have a nice solid formation of B wings there with You've a, done a good very... job keeping them together and yeah. keeping the ones that don't want to be stressed not stressed. Yeah, a very juicy target right there in front of them in the form of Chewbacca as well. And there looks to be quite a few target locks on him. I mean, at this point, yeah, Chewie is the target because the early He's... game threat of Kaz is gone. And you don't want to trigger Chewie's ability again, really. Yeah. Also, and it's the fun health scary. again. And yeah, it's scary. You know, Marksmanship, so, Ray, Contraband Cybernetics could happen at any point. Yeah. Notorious on there as well is... Notorious is actually really good. It's a really good upgrade. I like that one. So it's definitely something you've got to keep an eye out for. Yeah, that's one of the, the newer ones, isn't it? After you defend, yeah. if the attacker is in your firing arc, you can spend one charge. It's got two charges that recur. If you do, the attacker gains one strain token. While you perform an attack, if the defender is strained, you may reroll one blank. Very solid card. Combined with Ray Gunner, mm. that's very efficient. It's ve yeah, very efficient, very powerful. Um... And then again, is... sometimes you don't even need that many mods, you just need that. Yeah. And that's two that? more. 
Is that a reroll from fire control system? Yeah, fire control reroll. And that is all all shields down on Chewbacca. No balls ice, I can't trigger the S foils this time. Chewie yeah, yeah. shooting back. Spending Ray. Yeah. And that is into Netrum, who is the only target because Chewie's arc doesn't catch the other three B Wings. Yeah, the the, can't even notorious. The resistance Falcon doesn't like rotating the gun. Yeah. Especially if you have Ray on board, like either as pilot or gunner, you want to be flying at the opponent. Yeah. And sometimes that and, can be a problem. And now we've got Raylan re rolling because he's stressed. Uh, for getting marks for ship, so double crit on to Chewbacca there. Ooh. Unfortunately, he's got his proton cannons don't have any charges left, so he can't double tap there. Uh, damage sensor array and fuel leak. I mean, you know, from a resistance standpoint, they came out in that order. Yeah. Oh! Ooh. And will Ted spend the stress? Of course he will. Hot dice coming through. That's a lot of damage. So, yeah. So hit, crit, and then trigger fuel leak. Yeah, there's a lot going on here. Just, just let Fergus sort out the cars, I suppose. Yeah, and then the final crit, which was, I believe, a direct hit. So that's Choosing that's turning, one. That's turning three, three successes into five damage. There, that is my kind of odds. And you still got what Netrim to fire? Still got Netrim to fire, and this is why the B wing list is scary. When it works, it really works. I mean, you just took off what nine health? Uh, yeah, nine health is With only very three of your ships. Yeah, and none of them double tapped either. That's is very this. efficient. Yeah, that, that's Mark, scary efficient. Fire control, marksmanship, Ted and Braylon's ability, Gina giving the extra stress. It, it's a combination I'm really happy with, and it might just be a list that I sort of keep in my bag as a, oh, I got time to fly another list. Let's give it a go, yeah. sort of thing. Ooh, maybe occasionally tweaking some of the other upgrades. Yeah, like try some different try some there. different things to like the seismic charges or. Yeah. Wabby, but yeah. But that, that was a nice shot from BB 8 there. Two shields off Netrum, so really solid. Uh, Netrum giving it a go. Fire control system, hit crit. Should be, well, that is it, isn't it? Oh, it's a shot. It is now. It is now. That is Chewy gone. Wow. That's the first time I've ever taken out a Falcon that efficiently. Normally, the Falcon is taking me out that efficiently. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, you got four guns pointing at it. But... Yeah. I mean, it, it's just one of those... You don't often get opportunities like that to really double down, but when you do get the opportunity... Uh, Chewie doing, I believe that was his his shot, because it's doesn't specify that it can't be him. So doing a death oh, shot. That's true. Yeah, he does get a death shot. Okay. Uh, scoring two more damage onto Netrum. So I, mean, I do still like that that build on Chewbacca. It's very aggressive and evidently not very defensive. But four B wings is what yeah, I say there. But the point swing now three points for Fergus with those two objectives. Thirteen points for me there. I mean, just taking out Chewbacca seven points there was absolutely insane. Um, but whilst we are waiting for the darts to start getting flipped over, guys, just want to remind you, if you do like what we're doing here at Out of Art Game, you can support us on Patreon. The link is in the description below. We're regularly putting up videos and pictures of what's happening behind the scenes on there, so you get a sneak peek about what is coming up in advance. 
and no spoilers, but I think we know what's coming up for Shasa in advance. Yeah. It's a shame that that's not BB-8 to yeah. uh, get that just system phase barrel roll all boost, although in this case it would be a barrel roll. Yeah, definite barrel roll, but yeah. Showing that the B-Wings are dangerous behind as well as in front. There's so many things you can put on them. No, I see all of them. All of your B wings are five points. Yes, they are all five points now. Who do you think Fergus should have at least tried to focus down early on? Because they've all got good abilities. I feel like Gina and Netrim are more support roles and maybe go for the stress guys. Yeah, I would say probably Pendum is the one to go for. Um, just sort of that's two shields gone from Shasa there. Um, I would say Tendum because he spends his stress. Um, True, Brady so he keeps it and then has to clear it and get another one. Yeah. yeah. So I think in order of who you should take out, it's Tendum, then Braylon, then probably Gina, just because she has more of a loadout, so has a lot more. Yeah, talk. more loadout, higher initiative. Yeah, and then Netrum, but. Again, it's really tough. I mean, if... it's it's crazy to think that that's the order, and then you look at what Netrim has on board, and you're like, really, yeah. you're leaving that until last? Yeah, it is. It is incredible. I mean, taking out Gina or Netrim, I think, is still quite beneficial because it, it reduces oh, yeah. the options for supporting Ted and Brayden with their stress. But I think Tendum is probably. On the table, at least, the best B Wing there is. I mean, don't wrong, Hera is amazing being an I6 B Wing and some of the tricks you can give her, but I do think Ten Up is of, yeah, the best. Offense, you do get yeah. more from 10. Yeah. So, yeah. And it does put these. Y wings and BB-8 in a really difficult position now because there's a lot of health to chew through. They don't. They've got some things that could really help. I mean, if they could ionize one of these B wings to slow it down and get it away from the pack, that could be interesting. Um, things they've only a... got little guns. Yeah, that's where they suffer. Little gun. Uh, no, BB-8 no... be rolling down the window and shooting coins out. Yeah. Um, but there is passing a stress to Braylon and 180ing with oh, Netrim. Oh, the 180 barrel roll. Yep, barrel roll 180. That is so cool to see. <laughs> when, when we started this game, um, Ben, who's a regular on the channel, does commentary, looked at my list and said, if you don't use at least 90% of the things on this list, then you automatically lose. I think I'm currently it's about a lot to get through. I think I'm at about seventy percent of the tricks. I've used heavy laser cannon, proton cannons, prox mines, Netron's ability, Gina's, Tens, Braylon's. You know what you haven't used? Jamming what beam. Have I haven't used jamming beam yet. <laughs> oh, that that's where it's gonna get tricky. And I don't think I've used ion torpedoes actually either. Oh no, I have. Gina has used an ion torpedo. So so far. I've used a lot of the tricks there, but not all of them. So in Ben's eyes, those 13 points mean nothing right now. But you never know when you might need a munitions fail safe. Yeah. It's a, again, it's a cheap upgrade when you've got very few points left to spend. What is it, one point? Uh, yeah, one point. Yeah, it's, it's um, definitely one of those things of, well, I've got a torpedo and a point left over. Sure, we'll throw it on there. Yeah, I mean, your other options, you're looking at delayed fuses or targeting computer. I already have a target lock. And you know what? I'm not a huge fan of delayed fuses. Because I, I tend to find I don't think enough in advance. I also look at it and go, well, if I put a timer on it, that just gives my opponent more time to get away. Yeah. So it's a case of I'd rather just drop when I want it to drop and have it do what it needs to do. 
is the better option in my eyes. But these B wings are scattering to the wind at the moment. Yeah, they're spreading out a little bit. I think the gap that they had to try and move into from where they were positioned was always going to be quite tricky. Um, but we still got at least two guns on target, Netrum pulling off a really fun manoeuvre and Gina still having what looks like a bit of a long range shot at Lega there, so... And minimising the targets for those Y-Wings and basically BB-8 is just out in the middle of nowhere at the moment. Yeah, it's interesting because a lot of the time I see the pod on the board, it's... Uh, rose and has 3PO crew in order to yeah. be able to um, coordinate. Yeah. But here we've got Han Solo crew to you know stack up on evades if BB-8 needs it. And I, I don't know that BB-8's really going to be pulling his way off. Then again, he did take off a decent amount of damage on Netrim, so I might be yeah. using my words there. I mean, Rose is probably more points and it could be that at that stage... Oh, yeah, it's definitely a case of BB-8 is two points. Yeah. That is he the only one? Oh, that's Gina into Shasta. Hit two crit. Oh. I think, yeah, I think BB-8 is the only, the only two point ship for resistance at the moment. Yeah. There's not a lot of two point ships out there anymore, to be honest. I think is a little bit of a shame, but some of those two-point ships did actually benefit from going up a bit by actually having access to loadout, because you had, like, Lieutenant Blount, for instance. He really needed some loadout to be more efficient. Yes. Oh, one more damage on Netrum. He is nearly gone. And also, interesting to note, Fergus has claimed all of the objectives at this point. So, oh, he's, he's kind of got to to make yeah. up the points at this stage of the game. Yeah. I say at this stage of the game, we're on turn four. Yeah. Still plenty of turns left to go. And Gina yeah. and Tenlum still both very healthy. Yeah, but if you take the Nitrum, he does get it down to a 3v3. Right. Depends on if I get Bullseye, then it's almost like it's a 6v3 with the double tapping. There is that, yeah. Uh, Netrum just checking what he's got. Fire control system, just the one. That dice went miles. And that is another point of damage on Shasta there. So no more shields there. Oh, no, the crits come out. Panic pilot. Ooh. And here is the stabilized S foils double tapping with heavy laser cannon. One more point of damage. I think that's the only downside with stabilized S foils is that you have to spend the target lock to do it so you don't have it for modification. But I mean, that's I a pretty good thing. No, it's, just, it's a whole yeah. other shot. Yeah, I do think at the same time it kind of makes sense. I mean, yeah. Particularly when the B Wings, you know, with 10 and Braylon's ability in particular, you don't need to take your action to focus. You, you can yeah. just take the target lock and then gain stress in other ways. It is very powerful. Now we're going to turn five. Fergus is six points now from those objectives, and I'm up to 13. Netrum is very close to going down. And Gina is dropping a seismic charge. I wonder which obstacle that's going to destroy. Definitely not any of the other five because they're not in range. Yeah. So watch the B-Wings continue to scatter here. Let's see who we manage to catch there. But I think that takes some time. You haven't caught yourself. That would be the ideal. It'll be unfortunate. Slower move there from Shasa. 
think that might just be beyond range of the bomb. Not Are we close? Not. It's very close. Very close. I mean, you could always try a barrel roll to get away from it if you were yeah. particularly worried. Uh, BBA is definitely in range one, so there's... BBA can bad. also barrel roll, though, so... Three. So, interesting to see what Fergus does. Go for the calculate. Yeah. Not bothered about the size. I suppose he's still got, he's still fairly healthy as well, so. And slow rolling Lego in there. I almost would have been tempted to go maybe a little bit faster with Lego to try and possibly line up a proxy mine, but any faster you would have run the risk of... No, I think I think where Lego is is okay, because if, you know, the B-Wings ha haven't moved yet, they've got to go forwards at least a little bit, and yeah. you're kind of in line with that rock, and if you do need to go in that direction, you can just do a bank. Yeah. Well, let's see what's Netrum got. A one bank. Oh, oh that's close. Bombs. That is incredibly close there. I'm very curious if BB-8 has a shot here. I'm very curious as to whether... If it does, then not barrel rolling and taking the calculate was the right call. If not, and BB-8 takes damage from this bomb, mistake has been made. I mean, that angle is incredibly tight, and again, from where the camera is positioned, it's really difficult to see. Oh, we have the Talon from 10 there. Sneaking in just next to that cloud. Yeah, and Ooh. Raylan just sneaking past that debris. Does he bump? Move your hand. That's your Move hand. your hand. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Move. <laughs> and I think that was a bump by the looks of I, it. I think it was a bump. I mean, it's hard to say because we're not going to see any actions because it's got, because Brandon's got stress anyway. But missing that obstacle was, I'm not going to lie, pretty good if I do say so myself. And doing it twice. Also, not not bumping with with uh, Gina. Who's that, Gina? Yeah. You know, normally, if those are the moves you dial in, if the one at the front bumps, you probably bumped yourself. But yeah, true. That was Ooh, close. So Shasta is caught. Netrum is caught. Netrum so is down. Yourself. If that one bag could actually completed. I would have been far enough away. True, so the bump. So the bump was good. Unfortunately, a BB-8 barrel would have been better for Fergus there. Uh, there is the stress move over from Gina to 10. It's really nice to be able to get rid of stress on a B-Wing, just freeing your dial up. And like not, feeling, not feeling bad about it. Yeah, not feeling bad about it by passing it to play ships that want it. Sometimes I wish I had 10 noms ability. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, so two hits there from your base attack. Bending to just one damage. And... Stabilize S-foils. Incoming jamming beam. Actually using it. Wait, this is a jamming beam shot? This is a jamming beam shot off of the stabilized S force to get rid of Lega's target lock. Now was that was that something you were worried about? I think or it was more a case of, case of I I want to use this. Yeah, I think it was more a case of hey, why not do it? Oh, and it looks like Braylon did not bump. Oh, right. Wow. 
Oh, hang on. That was a four dice shot at range one from Braylon into oh. Lega. Okay. I guess I was expecting an action, but he's he's stressed, so he, he he's, wouldn't have taken one. So yeah, double stressed. Okay. Uh, so Lega down to two. Oh, checking for that. Yep. So ten dub. So target lock, spend the stress, not even worrying about double tapping. That is Shasta gone. Powerful. Spending stress to do that, it's a great feeling. Yeah. And I, I completely, after flying this list, I completely understand that it is a brutal list. But it, I think it could also suffer quite easily in what ways with only having one evade dice on a b-wing if you're not able to fly in formation and get such a good round of shooting and they're able, and people are able to focus fire down a b-wing i do think that they could potentially go down fairly quickly if someone is able to get a good couple of shots in well I mean, you know, focus fire did in this game against Chewbacca, so yeah. absolutely. Also, I think I mean, you're right early on with Kaz trying to slam behind them, that could have really caused some disruption. Yeah. So, but I mean, I'm just thinking a good plasma torp or proton or advanced proton torpedo could... They're incredibly painful for any ship, to be honest, when they get off really well. Against a one of age ship, they those would be very dangerous, especially plasmas getting rid of shields as well. Ooh, nice prox mine there. That's got potential to do some damage, yeah. Got potential, absolutely. Also, I mean, clearly the game is currently going in your favour. You've got three yeah. very healthy ships against two less healthy. But points yeah. wise, you're only two ahead. Yeah, again, it, it's almost like I'm reading from the same script here, but that's the way the 2.5 works. You can focus on taking ships down, or you can focus on the objectives, and both are paths to victory. Both will take almost as long as each other to get there. Yeah, I mean... Still, they're still solid options. Before objectives were introduced, you know, You'd be looking at this from resistance saying, oh, well, never mind, I'll just I'll probably just pack yeah. it up. There's there's no chance. But with the points you know, keeping up. Yeah. Fergus I mean, still has a shot. Yeah. I mean you'd look at this and say if it wasn't it wasn't for objectives, Fergus would have, say, if we do it on the two point five, Fergus would have five points and I would be if you said half points as well. I would still be on 16. So, I mean, I've only scored two points and objectives and there's no half points. So, yeah, it, it just goes to show that in the same amount of time it's taken me to get to 16 with taking ships off the board, Fergus is almost there with the objectives. I mean, if he can hold out for two more turns, he's got it in the bag. It's a really tall order against these ships. Yeah, especially when we've got BB-8 staring down... Who is that? Gina? Uh, uh, ten dumb. Oh, he's staring down ten. Great. Yeah. Well... So, yeah. That, up, that's a really, really unfortunate position to be in, but... It's, it's not over yet. That's the great thing about this. Back in 2.0, you'd probably just be like, yeah, I think I'll call it now, thank you. BB-8 is great and all, but he can't take out three B-Wings. Yeah, I think possibly earlier on in the game, maybe just send BB-8 on his own to go capture that point down the bottom and have... Who was down there? Shasa? Uh, Lego on? was down there, yeah. I think, there. I think having Lego and Shasa in the fight earlier on with their turrets and their proxy mines could have been a better option. I think BB-8 is one of those ones you kind of 
you just let him go off and do his own thing. Yeah, let him go capture points and focus on the objectives whilst everyone else is fighting. Yeah. Oh, what's Judah pulling out here? Looks like maybe a Talonar? I think it might be. Oh, that is a mean talent roll. That is... Especially that is, getting that bullseye. Although, that, if you are too close, you're not going to get the heavy laser cannon. Yeah, too close for heavy laser cannon. So get marksmanship. Yep, definitely marksmanship is always a bonus. And I believe that Gina may still have a target lock there as well. There are two target locks there. I can't see whose they are. I think they might actually be Ted and Braylon's. But this this really puts like Gina and Ted in ouch. Oh that's just naughty. Sorry, Lessa, bye bye. Yeah, I mean three crits into any one agility ship is going to hurt. Yeah, and one of them was a direct hit as well. That's ouch. just unnecessary. Um, what I think makes it quite interesting is I was, I was about to say you've got Gina and Ten there to essentially concentrate on Lega, but with Gina shooting first, it meant that Ten had more options. I mean, he doesn't have an option anymore. It's just BB-8, so that was... Yeah, unless there's some miracle that happens. I mean, you're already on 20 points. Yeah, so the end game is done now one more damage onto BB-8. What can BB-8 do to cause damage to 10? Will he Not enough. go away? Will At he go away point, fully healthy? Fergus needs to KO another ship. Even the three points from objectives, objectives. would only get into, what, 17? Oh, not like that. The calculator had already been spent, so... Oh, that was... That was but quite what was You kept them together when you needed them to and avoided obstacles. Fergus self bumped a few times, unfortunately, but it's a good yeah. game. Highlights it, the, uh, the balance between objectives and just shooting. It really does. And anyone that's on the fence about 2.5, these are the kind of moments I always say to them. And you know what? I had a really good time, and I know Fergus, although he ruined some of those miscues with the bumping, also had a really good time as well. And to be honest, he normally kicks my butt on TTS, and when it comes to playing IRL, I tend to take those, so he's still ahead in our win-loss ratio, but it was a I definitely great want to try, game. I definitely want to try some of his builds that he's used in this. And also, if you're a Rebel player, try the B-Wings. Yeah. Try those B-Wings. Even if you don't have four, Ted and Braylon on the table are great. Or stick Gina in there with them. Really good options. So definitely well worth having a look at those guys. Um, but James, I hope you enjoyed that display of Rebel of Resistance. That was a great, great one. Thanks for having me on. No worries. But yeah, thanks for joining us. But guys... Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that game as much as I enjoyed flying it. Um, just a reminder, please do like the video, subscribe to the channel. Your support through subscriptions is greatly appreciated. We have the link for the Patreon in the description below, but we will see you next time.